So hello, uh, this is going to be an Osaka special, Osaka only presentation uh, led by me. My name is Derek and Sam and Dapple. We'll do a brief introduction later, but our topic is about machine learning and specifically sentiment analysis. So our outline looks like this. First, we'll do a brief introduction. Actually, I will be introducing uh, both, I mean, all three of us. And then we're going to talk about our process, how we achieve this, and then a quick introduction uh, into machine learning and sentiment analysis. And then we're going to talk about more specifically on what we did, uh, and then how we did it. And then we're going to do a quick live demo at the end of it. So first is an introduction. So basically, all three of us are from three different countries. Uh, I'm from Canada, and uh, Dapple is from Japan, and Sam here is from Nigeria. So uh, we're all relatively new to acting. Uh, I joined almost exactly one year ago in October 1st, and uh, Sam joined pretty much March this year, and Dapple joined in April this year. So we're all relatively new, so Shiva-san asked us to make a presentation for this year's <laughs> Back 10 Tech Conference so that we get this kind of experience, which is interesting. So this is basically uh, what happened. How did we do it? So like I said, it was a special request from Shiva-san. <laughs> and our normal schedule looks like this. We have work every day. But then we allowed, I mean, we were allowed some extra time specifically to work for this conference. So every Friday was our hackathon day. So this was kind of like a cheat day where we don't have to worry about normal work. And we had a time slot to work specifically for this. Uh, having said that, we had maybe about a month to do this, so maybe around four hackathons. And so, uh, based on a subject, whether that's enough time or not enough time, we'll talk about that later when we show our live demo. Uh, so, I'll do a quick uh, definition of what sentiment analysis is. Uh, Google says that sentiment analysis is the process of computationally identifying and categorizing opinions expressed in a piece of text, blah, blah, blah. My translation of this is basically, what is this text? Uh, what kind of sentiment or feeling is behind this text? Is it positive or is it negative? So for some quick examples, uh, the first example I want to show is this sentence, this chicken is the bomb. So is it negative or positive? Well, the answer is positive. So uh, I've color-coded the sentence for now, just so that you get an indication of uh, what words start to balance out or what words start to turn negative. So the next sentence, we're reusing one of these words, the bomb killed 50 people. So now, last time, bomb was a positive word to describe chicken. But now this sentence is negative because it killed 50 people. So the bomb now starts to become neutral, and the act of killing 50 people is now negative. So back to the first example. Uh, the chicken is so dry. So previously, chicken was positive. So now this sentence is negative. Right. So now, chicken is now a neutral word, and being dry is now negative. But if we add one more, this chicken is delicious. So now this word, this sentence is actually positive. And now, the chicken kind of remains neutral, but delicious is absolutely a positive word. So in the end, after a lot of training, uh, eventually we'll get into this kind of chart, where there's neutral, uh, words that don't really have any association with positive 
or negative sentiment, but uh, you get some words specifically uh, related to these sentiments. So if you notice in this chart, uh, there's bomb in both negative and positive. So depending on what kind of techniques you use for sentiment analysis, uh, we can actually start to analyze expressions as well. So saying something is the bomb is usually positive, but most uh, sentences that use the word bomb will be negative. So there's this kind of uh, difference that we need to be careful about when we do uh, training or for our data. So next, uh, just going to do a quick introduction to what machine learning is. Maybe most of you know what this is, but Google says it's a subfield of computer science that evolved from the study of pattern recognition and computational learning theory in artificial intelligence. What it is trying to say is that how can we make machines imitate humans' process of learning? So a very interesting example that we found was uh, this. To actually do machine learning, uh, we actually need a lot of data and train the machine to uh, be able to do some very simple things. So for example, this one is trying to add two numbers, specifically in binary. So with 2,000 2, sets of data, uh, it's trying to add five and six and the answer it comes up with is 8, which is obviously incorrect. But uh, as we add more and more data, over 4,000 iterations, then we start to get answers that are closer. If you add 81 and 71, the answer it thinks it is, is 150. So it actually doesn't uh, compute the answer. We're trying to train this machine to do it without the adding function. So. If we give it enough data, say for example over 8,000 iterations, uh, it starts to become very accurate. The machine learns how to do a simple arithmetic problem. So you might be thinking, um, so what? Why do we need something like this? So how do we combine, or what's the point of combining sentiment analysis and machine learning? Or how is this useful? Well. There's plenty of things uh, that you can do it for. For example, uh, especially if you have enough data, you can crawl through what's uh, in the social media. So social media already provides you with a lot of data. And uh, if we can take advantage of this data, uh, especially through machine learning, obviously manually going through each uh, set of data in social media is basically impossible. So you can get things like, uh, how is our latest product doing? Uh, if you've heard something like Samsung Note 7 has gotten a lot of negative uh, social media feedback. So if you search for uh, Samsung Note 7, then maybe uh, the general analysis is that it's not providing any positive sentiments, it's mostly negative. So you know that your product is not doing very well. So how is our brand image is one of them. Uh, if you search for your company name, you can kind of gauge at whether uh, people like your company or not. Uh, for musicians, how is my new album doing? Um, what are people saying about this event? And um, if you launch a new commercial, whether it's good, going well or not, and also, for example, do people like me? So uh, one of the things that we wanted to try that we thought was very interesting was the 2016 US elections. So our topic specifically, we're trying to talk about do people like me? So uh, at first, our goal was to just get a bunch of data from Twitter about the 2016 elections, and then we're going to see what sentiment is behind Hillary Clinton and what kind of sentiment is behind Donald Trump. So later on when we talk about examples or when we show a live demo, uh, we're going to talk about what actually happened. But this was our original goal and what we set out to do. Uh, so next, Sam is going to talk about 
required implementation. Uh, okay, thank you. And so far, I think something very obvious and easy to learn is we're really interested in chicken. <laughs> and yeah, all our examples are wrapped around chicken and stuff. But okay, let's go into sentiment analysis, deep learning. <laughs> and the question is, how is it done, and how does it work? Well, there are different approaches to sentiment analysis. We have. Two broad uh, examples, I mean, may ways, but to save us time, and I'm not sure everyone will be interested in just about every uh, way possible to do this, so I've narrowed it down to the one we've used. There is lexicon based and machine learning based. Lexicon based is basically uh, identifying positive words and negative words. So if a sentence has more positive words than negative words, you know, okay, it's positive. And if it has more negative words than positive words, you know it's negative. But that can be tricky sometimes because in the case of the chicken is a bomb, what do we know? If we think chicken is positive and bomb is negative, does that mean the statement is neutral? No. So that may not be the best way. Of course it has its own advantages as well. But there's another way which is machine learning. Machine learning has two broad divisions, maybe four, but we're interested in two. Unsupervised learning and supervised learning. Unsupervised is basically letting the computer, the system figure out things by itself. And supervised is when you give it data, you kind of help it to classify some of them so it can learn from that. And for that we have linear classification. We have binary tree also and things like that, but linear classify, classification, and under that is where we have neural network, which is deep learning. So neural network is uh, giving the system a way to uh, represent data in a kind of neuron, in neurons, and things relate to each other as, as, as a sequence. I will explain that later on. Okay. So how does machine learning compare to a natural or traditional system? So in a natural or traditional system, you give the computer your inputs and a program. Then the program runs on the input and gives it your output, right? We're used to that. But in machine learning, it's different. You give the computer your inputs and your output. Then you tell the computer, figure out a program that can generate this output based on the inputs. So it's up to the uh, computer to figure out that by itself. And Bill Gates said something very interesting. It says, if programming is automation, then machine learning is automating automation. So we want the computer to automate things, but the process by which it automates it, we want to automate it as well. And machine learning is basically pattern recognition. It has no idea of what things are. We have an idea, we understand bits of the information, but for the computer, it just sees it as patterns. And also, yeah, input and output based and program based. It's very, this is very important to note that the input and outputs here is more important than the program itself. So when you have a good model, but you have a very bad data set, then the overall output will be very bad. But in the case of a traditional computer, all you need is just a good system to be able to undo what kind of uh, inputs you give it. So what are the key elements, elements in machine learning? First is representation. How do you want to represent your knowledge when, or even the inputs and the outputs? For example, you want to do image recognition. A picture is just uh, an array of pixels. How do you represent this in a way the computer can process? We're talking about sentiment analysis. So we are talking about sentences. How do you represent that in a way the computer can understand? And even your knowledge, when you learn things, how do you want to represent that? Also, evaluation. 
evaluation is checking how correct or wrong your system is. So when it sees the inputs and tries to predict the outputs, then it checks how far am I from the inputs. And the next thing will be optimization. Also, you want to correct. So if I'm too far from the input, uh, from the expected output, I try to back down a little bit and readjust. Now, there are some issues to machine learning. And one is overfitting. Overfitting is when your model is too good on what it was trained on. It's like 100% accurate. But when you bring in new data in real life, it becomes really poor. See this as a student that only knows what the teacher says. But when you ask something else, like, I have no idea, my teacher never said this. So that is one of the problems of uh, machine learning, which you can run into. This can be caused, and also we have bias. Bias is learning the same wrong thing over and over. So it says your imp the inputs, but the sense it's making out of the inputs as it relates to the output is uh, not very correct. And it keeps intensifying on learning the same mistake. We will try to demonstrate that later on. Variance. And variance is learning random things irrespective of the actual signal. So regardless of the inputs you're giving, the system just <coughs> learns something totally different, not what is expected. So for example, in the case of uh, the example we showed of adding two numbers together, the program takes, it's, the idea is to learn to carry one when you add binary. So when you add one and zero, it's one. One and one is zero, you carry one to the next state, right? So what if your program just thinks it's all, uh, you're doing all, like one and zero, one or zero is one, or maybe x4, one and one is zero, and forgets about the one, then that would be like variance. Because it's learning random things or something else, irrespective of what you're trying, what you're giving into the system. And there are something you should take note when you uh, do machine learning. Okay, so the technique we used for our, our own implementation. First, we use long short term memory. This is uh, a, an aspect of recursive neural network. Basically, it's telling uh, an algorithm that helps the model to remember things it saw before. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So uh, we're not analyzing things based on just the present. We want to see how the present relates to the previous things. And that's one short-term memory. So it's long-term memory. So see it as long-term memory, short-term memory. Long-term memory in the sense that it remembers things it saw before now and how it relates to now. And short-term memory because it learns to forget irrelevant things. So if it realizes, OK, I saw this before, but we're not really using it, then it can forget it and use that to learn something new. So it's kind of interesting, like we humans do. If you've not been using a language for some time, you tend to forget that and learn something new. And also, we think it will be interesting. This is probably not a very common approach to learn by character, at least for sentiment analysis. You can learn by character to do all sorts of fancy things like make a program that writes C program. And yeah, they really do well in fancy programming. I mean, programming, except the declare variable they will never use. But then, for sentiment analysis, we decide to use character base. And the advantage of using this, it's not by any means better than any other method, method but it's just something to note is, since it's learning by character, when you uh, create a new word from an existing word, it's not like, I don't know this word. It's like, OK, I'll just try to process it like I've been doing before. It's analyzing one character at a time. At a time. And another thing is, we see a sentence as a, a, a set of words. So I like chicken. Chicken, of course. I like chicken. We see it as three words, I, like, and chicken. 
for character-based learning, it sees it as I L uh, I L I K E C H I N K E N. That's what he thinks. Oh, I put N in front of it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he sees it as a sequence of characters, so it doesn't differentiate between words as words. Basically, it learns as character. So, let's see this example. The chicken is so. Now, when it gets to like dry, it starts to like, okay, I know this compared to maybe the chicken is so delicious. See, the chicken is so D, up till D, it's kind of, I'm not so sure what it is. It's still in the middle, or maybe it's positive. But when it sees dry, it's like, all right, I know where this is going. It's bad. Before, I'll show you a quick example of that. But before that, I will, for the geeky ones among us, I will show this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so scary. <laughs> so everything I'm going to say for the next one minute, please try not to understand. Uh, it's OK. This, <laughs> this is the algorithm for long, short-term memory. And it has a lot of advantages over uh, traditional recursive neural network because it helps us to overcome problem, uh, problem of uh, vanishing gradients. That's a lot of things talking about. Basically, it uh, as forget gate. This is an example of a forget gate that helps us to forget things. We have input uh, gates that decide if we want to keep the knowledge, we want to keep information from the current state, or we don't want to do that. But anyway, let's just forget about this. It's very boring. I just thought it would be fun to scare you a little bit, to make you think, yeah, we have just done something nice. <laughs> OK, so this is an example we did. So after trading, this graph shows two, one is positive, zero is negative. So when we pass a statement like Donald Trump will win, it's like Donald Trump will as I'm still not sure what you're trying to say here. Like is it positive, negative? But when it's saw the W is like, yeah, I know where this is going already, then it jumps to positive. And when we say when it's saw L again, it's like I know this already, it's loose. So the uh sentiment, the polarity of the sentiments goes towards negative. So now for more demo and explanation of uh not explanation, but to really visualize everything I've been saying before, I'd like to hand it over to Dapple. Okay, it's still, uh, it's already uh, 20th, but I can show you, I can show you a short demonstration of uh, how our system works. Okay, so uh, we have a system that has a lot of different parts. The dataset programs, uh, we don't show you the, how our system think about the uh, US elections. So I can show you the uh, overfit, overfitting case of uh, our uh, system. So for example, Uh, 
sequence of characters, but if we remove the wheel of system, that will know that this sequence of characters do not trump the wins. So, <laughs> Uh, our system doesn't understand this this sequence of character is positive, so uh, that's because our system is not general, uh, generalized. Okay, I I can show you a, a more example of bias. Uh, basically, Donald Trump itself has uh, no meaning, so it should be neutral, but our system has bias about Donald Trump, so... Our system think Trump is negative, but... <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it's not like opinions, it's just about <laughs> system's opinions. <laughs> Please take care. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, that's it. That's all. The demo part. Yeah. Uh, I'll just like to add something very little about the reason why we saw a difference in Donald Trump and Trump itself. It's because when we were training for positive sentences or for equal amounts of sentences, we've trained using like Donald Trump. But for more time in negative, we've used only Trump. So for the computer, it doesn't know Donald Trump and Trump are the same. It's like, yeah, I just see a bunch of patterns and once it's like this, this is what I should give out. So the biggest uh, take home from this is uh, machine learning, whatever fancy algorithm you're using, is not magic. and your model is not as important as your training data sets, your data sets for training. So the better your data sets, the better your output. So if you are uh, doing machine learning and you're training a system and you're not getting uh, accurate results, before you think about uh, improving your algorithm, first thing you should think of a quick data way is improve your training data sets. Thank you. Thank you, that's all.